Hey everyone, JD Bar here, also known as Backlog Warrior. Today we're going to be recreating Twitch Plays Pokemon using Stream Warrior Deluxe, a free live streaming alerts and overlay design software that I made. And the paid version includes a chatbot, which is what we're going to be using today to recreate Twitch Plays Pokemon. However, we are going to use Stream Warrior's multi platform options to also include YouTube, Smashcast, and Mixer. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our stage and we're going to set the width and the height to our streaming resolution which is 1920 1080 for me and I'm going to add a new element a widget element and I'm going to name it chat because I want to show my chat on the screen and we're going to choose the stream warrior universal chat as the source and we're going to make the width 1920 and we'll make the height about 300 pixels and I'm just going to add a little bit of background color to it using the CSS color value RGBA 000 for RGB and 0 0.5 for the alpha. That'll give us a nice transparent black background. And I'm going to remove the border. I'm going to save that. I'm going to go to the dashboard, get the stage URL. I'm going to open OBS here. On the bottom right, we're going to add a new source. We're going to add a browser source. And we're going to paste our URL in there, set the width and the height to the same thing as the stage, which is 1920 by 1080, and we'll hit OK. And so now we can see that Stream Warrior is listening for chat messages. And I'm just going to test that over here on my laptop. I have my Twitch Smashcast and Mixer accounts open. And there's Twitch. and my Smashcast account. And finally, let's check Mixer. Oh, forgot to hit enter. There we go. Perfect. All right. And I test YouTube too, but YouTube chat actually only connects when you're streaming live. So we can't test that for this recording, but if we were live, we would totally be able to do it. So now that we have a chat that's on our screen, I have a Pokemon Yellow emulation going from some website I found on Google. And we can walk around and do stuff. It does let us set custom controls, which I've already set up to be the arrow keys for movement, A and B, and then right shift for start. So what we want to do is we want to detect when our chat users start typing in controls into the chat. We want to pass those through to this emulator right here. So the way we're going to do that is going into Stream Warrior Deluxe and we're going to open the chatbot. So everything in the chatbot is made of commands and when a streamer, I'm sorry, a viewer uses one of those commands, it triggers a command event to which we can react with a series of actions, just like the events and actions that we covered in the last tutorial for the widgets. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a new command and we're going to make it be an up command so that way we can move the character up. We don't need any arguments. That is something we will cover in a future tutorial for making more advanced chat commands. But for now we're going to do a command with no arguments. So now we've got a chat command. We're going to add a chat command event now for that command we just made, chat command up. So what do we want to do on chat command up? Well, we want to tap the up key, which is the key that we use in the emulator. So we'll save that. And actually, before I forget, we have chatbot roles. So when someone joins your stream, by default, the chatbot gives them the everybody role. And they can only use commands that are listed right here. However, the broadcaster automatically gets the owner role and can use any chat command that the chatbot knows. You can add other roles um, and give them to you know your donators and give them special commands, but we're not going to do that in this tutorial. We're just going to let everyone be able to control our game of Pokemon. So let's test that now that we have it set up. Oh, let's also remember to click Enable Chatbot. And we can go over here. We'll go to the game and we'll try it out. This time I'm going to try it from my Smashcast account. And we'll just type up. 
So nothing happened, and that's a little interesting. Let's try it in Notepad because I want to make sure that it's actually not working. I'll just type some lines of text, and then I'll type up over here. And if the little cursor goes up, then we know that it's working. So it's working in Notepad since my little cursor just went up. But it's not working in the Pokemon emulator. So why would that be? Well, turns out certain games need you to press the button down a little bit longer for it to process, especially with older emulated games. When you're playing new games like Overwatch, they'll be able to detect the instant key presses, uh, no problem. But Game Boy emulators seem to have a problem. Fortunately, we can fix this. We'll go to Stream Warrior Deluxe, and instead of using the key tap event, we're going to tell it to use the key hold event. So that takes another argument, a four argument. And if we check the manual for that, and check the action glossary, we'll just scroll down here. We can see that it takes a time, which is a time in milliseconds to hold down the key, where 1000 would be one second. So we know we need it to not be instant, but we don't want it to be too long either. So we're gonna try 200 milliseconds, and that should be long enough for the emulator to pick it up. So we'll save that command, and we'll go to the emulator, and we'll just test that again. Up. And there we go. Apparently 200 milliseconds is the magic number for our emulator to pick up our key presses. So now that we know that, we can set up commands for the rest of our controls. We can do down, left, right, A, B, and start. And now we just need to make the events and actions for the rest of our key presses. Whoops, we want the key hold event, not the key tap. So there's down, we'll do left. I actually used this in a recent stream of mine. I did an Overwatch stream where people were able to control which abilities I was using. And also they could use my ult whenever they wanted, which was pretty funny because some of my viewers actually did get some kills by triggering my ultimate abilities in Overwatch. So that was a pretty fun stream. If you wanna check that out, it's in my recent uploads. It was pretty cool. And I think we just need to do start. Where is it? Key hold. So for start, I used right shift. So what exactly do we type in there? Do we do R shift? Do we do, what do we do? So we'll check the manual for that. And we can see it can be a letter, a number, or one of these. So let's click that. And we've got a list of keys we can use. Right shift, looks like right underscore shift is the keyword we're looking for. So we'll just check that. Right shift for 200 milliseconds. And that should do the trick. Now we do wanna make sure that we add to our permissions in the roles up here. A, B, start. There we go. Now everyone who joins our stream should be able to use our check commands to control our game as long as we have it in focus here. So let's test that again. Up, left, right, down, start, up, A, B, B. It works, it works perfectly. So, I mean, that's, we've done it. That's it. Now, one thing you may wanna do is, say you're a popular streamer, or you become a popular streamer because you're using Stream Warrior Deluxe, you may not want people to spam the start command and pausing the game over and over and over. That would be annoying for everyone else who's watching. What you can do is actually set a cooldown on the start chat command. If we go over here, we can set a cooldown on, let's see, what do we type here? Let's go down to set cooldown. There it is. The name of the event to set a cooldown on. Custom events are prefixed with custom hyphen, and chat commands are prefixed with command hyphen. All right, so for the first box, we wanna type in command hyphen, 
start because that's the name of our chat command start event then we can set a time so say we only want them to be able to pause every 10 seconds at the most maybe 20 seconds well this is milliseconds so we'll multiply it by a thousand and now that should prevent people from being able to spam the pause command so let's test that out close the manual come back to this so if we do start and then B and then start again nothing happens we can't pause the game and interrupt everyone else's good time at least for 20 seconds so you go up 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 this works really well for RPGs like this where you've got top-down movement and timing is a major factor because you do have to account for the fact that when you're streaming there is a minor delay However, Stream Warrior does connect to the chat servers for all of its platforms in real time, with the exception of YouTube, which generally pulls between one and five seconds, or a little bit longer sometimes. But Twitch, Mixer, and Smashcast should be pretty close to instantaneous. So we should be able to pause again. It's been about 20 seconds probably. And there we go. So our cooldown is working. So. I mean, that's basically how to recreate Twitch Plays Pokemon with Stream Warrior Deluxe. And it does work on our other services. So if we were restreaming this, this would work just fine. Let's test it on Mixer just to be sure. Yep. And then on Twitch. Yep. Everything works. So I think that about wraps up this tutorial. It was pretty short. But I hope you guys learned something here and will be able to recreate your own Twitch Plays Pokemon stream with Stream Warrior Deluxe. The chatbot is a feature of the paid version of Stream Warrior only. So I would consider becoming a subscriber or purchasing the lifetime license if you think this is something that you wanna use. And subscribe to me if you wanna see more tutorials. I will be making more advanced ones in the future. And follow me on Twitter, at Backlog underscore W, because I like to see what you guys use Stream Warrior Deluxe for. And sometimes I just like to watch your streams. So that's all for now. Adios, guys.